what he did. <laughs> I want to say good morning to everyone. Um, everybody say good morning. So good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Is this, uh, <laughs> well, my neighbor. Yeah. I'm not sure. I better swipe the screen just to make sure. There's one. There's a. There's a picture. Okay. If I could get someone that is watching, if you could let me know how the volume is. Good morning, Lana. Uh, I'm just going. Okay. Give it just another minute. We've got just one or two. There's three. Okay, we'll get we'll get started here this morning. Um, of course, if you're in Houston and you're in our area, it's raining pretty hard this morning. So we all just kind of water skied in here this morning. <laughs> and for those that couldn't couldn't be with us, we certainly understand that there's a lot of limitations here, along with everything else that's going on. But we're just so excited that we can reach out this way to those that, that are unable to be here. It's just such an amazing technology and just we're so thankful that the Lord said, you know, he, that, that prophecy could not come true any other way, could it? When he said the earth shall be filled with the, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. There's a, there's a, and that's, you know, interestingly, that's what we're really talking about is the, the world wide web, uh, but we have a new take on it with the gospel. Um, and and for the for us as Christians, um, for those that, that are children of God, that sons of God, sons and daughters, uh, we have we're logging on to a whole different web website. It's it's a www, but it's about the uh, again. This is the second part of a three week series on the three W's: the www, the the will of the fathers, the work of the Son, which is what we're going to do today, and then the, the uh, witness of the spirit just a little preview about uh, next week um, volume is good okay uh, oh volume is a little low little is your volume low. turned up well let me just push push this up just a little bit and see if that helps a little let's see if that helps Let's see if that works a little bit better. Sorry about this. I know this looks awesome on when we were doing this, we're posting these videos. It looks really awesome to have me standing here right in my face right now. Screen, but we'll make it work. All right. So let's see. Let's see if uh, Lana, tell me if that if that's a little bit better now. Okay. Um, uh, again, we're going to start with that. We'll, we're going to start in, uh, in uh, Ephesians, but the verse that we've been using kind of as an overlay is out of Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1, and that has to do with uh, the most, probably the most prophetic. Uh, you see, still, what did she say there a little bit? Say a little, <laughs> little better. A little better. Okay, great. Uh, probably one of the most prophetic, messianic prophetic uh, chapters in the in the uh, old covenant, and that's Isaiah 53, and it starts out, "Who has believed our report?" Uh, and that's what I mean by the WWW. Is this is a, this is a combined effort, mm -hmm. and it's a it's really a masterpiece. It, it was a mis it's a mystery that was hidden, according to what Paul. We're going to look at that, but it was never a mystery to God. He knew from the foundation of the world that he had this this uh, purpose and plan. Uh, for us in a, as, a, as a special uh, part of his creation. Unique to anything else that he's ever created is his, his divine design for what he wanted in a family with us. Uh, and what, a, you know, what, a, what, a, what an awesome thing that, that he would go to this, to go to these lengths to make us exactly like him, to make us exactly like him. And he had to go through this whole process in order to make that happen. It, it was this, all of these things were necessary to get the finished product that he wanted in, in us. And so uh, uh, today, the work of the Son, let's look at Ephesians chapter one. Last week we looked at the first few verses of this chapter which deals with the Father's will and it's important to understand that there's no, uh, there's no disunity between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in what what he desired for us. He's, God's not separated and Jesus is trying to bring us, you know, uh, you know, bring the Father into a better attitude toward us. This was the Father's idea. Um, 
In fact, if you have the open Bible that talks about this, this the Father decrees the plans to be carried out on humanity's behalf. The Son serves hum humankind to implement the Father's plans, and the Holy Spirit applies the work of the Son to the daily experience of believers in Christ. So, uh, and, and just a preview for a preview of next week um, the, about the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, I believe the Holy Spirit's uh, part in the work, uh, in the witness of this, is going to be great, more greater, a greater and greater dimension of, of display uh, in the church. And I believe that's coming. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think that you know we we've, we've struggled a little bit in some of the, you know, the challenges of, and the changes that have had that have happened in the church, and we've tried to become religious with some of the things. Um, and some of the things that, that really may not have been initiated by the Spirit, we've tried to associate and try to make happen, and there's been you know stuff that's just kind of been a little seemed a little bit not real. And so a lot of people, including myself, seem to have kind of backed backed away a little bit because what I want is the real thing. I want I want what I read here mm -hmm. to happen. I don't want it to be something that we're just trying to make happen in order to try to say that we're, that, 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 you know, that this is going on. I, I, I want, and I believe that's, I believe as we do two things that we're going to, I'm going to just keep you hanging on that. There's two things that are recorded in the word that are activators of the Holy Spirit in the church. There's two main things. Um, and next week we're going to, uh, you know me, I could take off on a tangent right now, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to, to keep every, every section here in place. But I'm excited about the prospects of what the, the true gospel, the message of the gospel, and the, and the glorification of Jesus in the midst of the church is going to do to activate what we've all, we all desire for the Holy Spirit to do uh, in the church. Uh, the, the demonstration uh, and the manifestation as it comes to us, as we, as we understand that we are dwelling and we're seated with him in heavenly places, that we are sons uh, we're not trying to get something down from, from God. We're, trying, we're not trying to pull something down. We're, we're trying to come down with it mm -hmm. as sons and daughters of God. Isn't that, isn't that a better prospect mm -hmm. that we actually can bring it down with us to, to demonstrate? Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit wants to do that, but that he wants Jesus to be the one that, that the center stage. He wants Jesus to be, and that's what we want too. Mm -hmm. We know that as he is glorified that we're all going to be edified. Um, and uh, so uh, Ephesians chapter 1, starting with verse 7, starts with the, the work of the Son. Uh, and, and again, this is just such a, a masterpiece of, of, what the, of what the Father intended to do and did do uh, for us. Uh, by the way, if, if you haven't, if y'all didn't get a chance to see the, the two illustrations that I put, in the, in, uh, put on the Facebook site last night, did y'all see those? Anybody see them? If you want to pull up on your phone right now, uh, rather than me having to pass them around, uh, there's two there's two illustrations on our on our Facebook page, um, and we're going to go. With this, we're gonna, I'm going to use these to, to 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 better clarify just how awesome God's organization was in setting this this trap. Really, it was a it was a trap that that caused us to be uh, redeemed in in such a way that was perfectly justified. Uh, perfectly just and carried out in a way that there could be no opposition in the courts, as there is in our country in so many ways right now. But there was, there is no opposition to this justice that was served, and uh, there, and, and the enemy knew that. But it was too late. By the time what happened happened, he'd already fallen for the trap. Uh, but it was a well laid plan, and the plan was laid for us. He had to do this for, in order for us to be like him. He, he wanted us to be like him, exactly like him. And that's what he's made us. Uh, Jesus is a life-giving spirit. Um, so, uh, now, uh, verse 7. In him we have, not we're trying to get, we have redemption through his blood. Amen. No question on that. Uh, that's, that's a statement of fact. Mm -hmm. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Uh, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom, uh, and then the word prudence in the New King James really is understanding. So the, he's giving us understanding of this mystery, this plan. Because once we understand the mystery and we understand the plan, 
then all then then we're going to our hope is going to be uh, elevated. Our excitement about the truth is going to be elevated because we we understand um, our identity and our inheritance. Remember, we seeing with two eyes now. That's not the natural eyes. It's the spiritual eye. Two eyes. Our identity and our inheritance. That's what he wants us to see with those two eyes spiritually. Everybody with me on that? Okay. Uh, which, uh, having made known to us the mystery of His will, see, He's made this known to us. We 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 understand what what He's what He was trying to do, and He's wanting to clarify this because it, it makes such a difference in our whether we receive we're receiving word uh, and and we're believing a word that's been spoken, uh, which is the word is the substance of heaven. Um, the, the atmosphere of heaven is love, unconditional love, but the substance of it is word. And that word has been spoken. And as we as we respond to that word, some 30, some 60, some 100 fold response to that. So I want to I want to understand the 100 fold return on that word. I want to be a manifested son. I want to be I want to be in that understanding where I'm not staying. I'm not saying staying uh, satisfied with less than what he's paid to give us. Yeah. Wouldn't it be sad? For, it'd be sad for us to say, well, you know, all that other stuff is OK, but. You know, I'm, I'm kind of okay with what, you know, look what's been paid for, and so I want it all. I want all that he paid for, for me to have. Amen. 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 And I believe the Holy Spirit wants to give it to us. Amen. And so, uh, and we can't back away from that. You know, our, like the song Waymaker, uh, yeah. even when that, we can't see it, he's working. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. he is. And he's working in our hearts to develop this truth based upon word, the word, which is Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word, and He became flesh and dwelt among us. So we know the Word of God through the Son. Uh, now, uh, according to good, His good pleasure, pleasure which He purposed in Himself. See, this was God's good pleasure that in the dispensation of the fullness of times He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in the heaven, in heaven and which are on earth in Him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance. There's that, there's that inheritance. Being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. That we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. So he's talking about those that first trusted. And we're trusting today because we're getting the same understanding of this mystery. Amen? Mm-hmm. So what is this mystery? What is the mystery? We're going to find out. I mean, if you want the answer to the question, we'll just go on to part two, the second section. Let's go to Colossians chapter one. Colossians chapter one. And it's amazing when you start reading and comparing these, these, especially these Pauline uh, epistles, that there's so many things that he says the same thing over and over again in different, a little bit different wording, but it's the same. Uh, Well, just just so you'll see what I just what we just read in Ephesians, let's back up to verse 19 in Colossians chapter one. Where it says, "For it pleased the Father." See, here's the Father. It's the first W, mm-hmm. the, the the will of the Father that in Him all that and that's in Him is in Christ. All the fullness should dwell, and by Him, notice that by Him, in Him, for Him, to Him, everything in everything in, in on these in Colossians has to do with Him. Mm-hmm. We preach Him. We preach Jesus crucified. Amen. Uh, whether things on the earth, things in heaven, things that, and having made peace through the blood of his cross. See, uh, here's the son. And you who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet he is now reconciled in the body of his flesh. There's the son through death to present you what? Holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight forever and ever. And if you notice, there's a verse uh, connection to that in 2 Corinthians 5, which we're going to look at in a little bit. Uh, if indeed you continue in the faith, and what that means, what he's not trying to say is you can, you, your 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 understanding of this mystery and the fullness of it increases as you stay in, if you, in is, is so that when we don't shrink back and we continue mm-hmm. to press toward what Paul called the upward call, he's bringing us into this revelation and fullness. Amen. Mm-hmm. So that's not that's what he's saying there. Um, and I, and then so let's go to verse twenty six. Uh, oh, uh, I started with verse twenty five, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship 
from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery, which, which has been hidden from ages and from generations. But now, everybody say now, now. now. has been revealed to his saints. And we know from, from uh, various other places that the revelation is coming by the Holy Spirit through the word. Jesus, take, Jesus is the, actually the, 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 the logos. He's the, he's the spoken, he's the written word, spoken word. And, and the Holy Spirit's job is to make it rhema, is to change it to the understanding in our hearts and bring the fulfillment of it to us. Uh, to, to them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is what? Christ in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory, and the word glory again is doxa, but what does glory really mean in God's eyes? His goodness, his goodness. Um, it, ha it means to have a good opinion of one resulting in praise and honor. So God has a good opinion of us in Christ because he has a good opinion of his son, and, he, and we're, not, we're one with his son. I love it. Amen? Uh, we're in Christ. Uh, and that's and so for for us to be in Christ as a body, and for Christ to be in us individually, is the mystery that was hidden from prior generations, but now has been fulfilled by the the plan of God, the work of the Son, and as we're seeing, as we're going to see more next week, the witness of the Spirit to this reality. This is a reality. Uh, our adoption, as we were talking about before we started here. Uh, good morning, Susan. I'm glad we're you're back on. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. trying to see who there. Uh, Mary Ann, California. We've got Mark. Mark actually is in Philadelphia delivering a van this morning. Uh, oh, morning, so he, Mark. Mark is, uh, I don't know, I, I think I see his picture there, but he's two hours west of Philadelphia. So be careful up there in that uh, yeah. weather up there in that way. Uh, so, uh, and then he goes on to say, which is Christ in the hope of the Lord, him we preach. So as we preach him, mm -hmm. we preach the mystery, we preach the reality, we preach the fullness of who Amen. we are. Because God has reconciled us to himself. Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, now, uh, let's look at something here. The first, let's go back. To, uh, this is where we're going to bring in the, how, he, how he put this in, uh, to work. In, in Genesis chapter um, 3. Genesis chapter 3. We've been talking about the garden. Uh, man was put in a garden, and now the garden has been put in man. Uh, amen? Mm -hmm. We have the garden in us. And that's the heart. The heart. The reality is that's why he says guard your heart, because that's your garden. See, now all we're res all we're responsible for is to tend it. We're not we're not we're not responsible for making something get planted there. Just like in the Garden of Eden, God planted it all, and all man had to do was tend it. Mm -hmm. When he got out of the garden, then all of a sudden he had to plant, and all he had to plant in was something that was going to be that was that was corrupted. Uh, because he was believing something that was no longer, he, he didn't have just God's thoughts like he did in the beginning. All he knew was God's thoughts. All he knew was God's word. And then he chose to, to believe a lie and accepted words that weren't from God. And then the, we, we see the rest. Uh, we talked about that a few weeks ago, the redemptive plan uh, to bring us back to where now the garden is actually in us, in our heart, in our spirit, man. We are, we are renewed and just like him. We are perfectly perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, in Christ, mm -hmm. uh, so um, but in but I want you to see this redemptive plan starts with verse uh, chapter three, right after the the fall. Uh, he talks to the he talks to to Satan, the serpent first. Verse fourteen, um, and his his future wasn't a real pleasant thing to, uh, for the rest of his eternity uh, but in verse 15 it, it says and, and I will put an enmity between you and the woman um, and between that and that woman there as I put in your notes uh, is Eve that's that's the enmity between Eve uh, uh, and between your seed and her seed now notice that the, that second word seed there is capital because mm -hmm. this is the first prophecy of Jesus right here the capital S is the, the seed that was going to come. See, the seed had to come through the woman because why? Why, why was that? Paul, Paul spends a lot of time talking about this, but man's seed was corrupted. Mm -hmm. So he had to use woman's seed to bring Jesus into our timeline and into human form. He couldn't use man's seed. If he had, he would have already been like the first Adam and everything would have been pointless. 
So we had to make a plan. Boy, this is, this is such a divine setup. And Paul talks about this where he says that, uh, you know, that we're saved through the woman. We're actually saved because the woman's seed is separate mm -hmm. from the man's seed. And uh, if it wasn't for that, we would have been in trouble. But see, that was, that was okay. God already knew. Mm -hmm. this, was a, this was a majestic plan. Mm -hmm. And again, what was, the final, what was the final desire on God's part? Us, but for us to be exactly like him. Uh, and John even goes on to say in, in 1 John chapter 2, it says, now we, we, don't, we, we see, but we don't yet know what we shall be. We know that we're going to be, we're going to be like him because we're going to see him as he is. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the final work, and there's a lot of stuff in, in 1 Corinthians 15 that talks about that, about the final installment of this perfect plan. Uh, which is the redemption of our natural body, uh, changing it from cor corruptible to incorruptible, mm -hmm. from, from being uh, uh, subject to death to no longer being uh, the, the last enemy to be destroyed. So if you look at, your, at, the, at the illustration here, this illustration, I found this on the web. It just, you know, I, th I, just, I just thought, I'm going to try this. I'm going to just type it in. But if you see, this is, this, is, uh, this is Eve. Notice the serpent wrapped around her leg. Now, where is the serpent's head? Under, yeah. down. <coughs> Under Mary's <coughs> foot. Yeah. Under Mary's foot. Now, who is she carrying in this picture? Jesus. So this is this is an illustration of the fulfillment of this prophecy right here. Mm -hmm. And so all through, everybody see that? Mm -hmm. All through the plan of God, the mystery of God, the developing of this plan, he knew this was going to be in the fullness of time. We're going to talk about this, but this is what is this was his objective. To have uh, the seed of the woman crush Satan, uh, and this was this was how he's gonna this was how it's gonna a virgin shall conceive. No, see, no no human, no male man. Uh, this was this was totally of God, but bringing uh, a supernatural man, Jesus, uh, capital M, uh, into the human timeline in a, in a human body as as the man, Jesus yeah. Christ. You to man, Jesus. You to man. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, we, people don't say that anymore, but it still is. I mean, it's still true. Everybody with me on that? So, then, isn't that a beautiful uh, illustration of that fulfillment? Yeah. Uh, and uh, so, we'll talk about that. Uh, we're going to go a little bit more. Notice the, the the sadness on her part, and that's not a that, that's a that's that's a fruit in her hand there. Again, it wasn't just a literal fruit. It was the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil that she ate from, which was a lie to believe mm -hmm. that we could do something apart from God and make ourselves like God without God. And that was the lie that Satan told Eve that she, that she was deceived by, but Adam knew better, but he said, okay, I'm going to just do it. No. So shame on Adam. Somebody, what Joseph <laughs> Prince was saying, that when we get to heaven, he's probably going to be, he may be in a, Barbed wire, isolated <laughs> area. Uh, so a lot of people want to hunt him down. But when they know, when you know the mystery, you see that that was necessary. Yeah. yeah. It had to happen. God knew it had to happen. Uh, and and it's hate. It's, it's terrible that it was. He subjected it to futility like that. But it was in hope. He subjected it to futility and hope because that was the only way that we could be like God and know good and evil and be separate from Him, just like He is. So we had to be under it to then become separated from it so we could have the perspective that God has today for us. And that's where we're going today with this, this work of the sun. Um, now, uh, the conflict between the seeds started, this is the one, two, three, fourth section of your notes, the conflict mm -hmm. started with Cain and Abel. So after this prophecy, guess what? Hmm. Every time a woman has a child, what is, what is, loose, what is Satan thinking? Could be the one. Is this the one? Yeah. So Cain comes out and he says, I gotta get to Cain. I gotta get to Cain. I gotta get him in my life because I'm gonna use him to try to wipe out the rest of her seed. So second second child was named what? Abel. Abel, if you look at Hebrews chapter twelve, was the first man that became righteous by faith. Because he offered to God a more excellent sacrifice. He was offering innocent, the innocent lamb on his behalf, the lamb of God, that he heard his father tell him about, about this prophecy about the seed, that Adam and Eve 
told him, told Abel about this this promise. And you're going to see it. I've never seen this before. Last night or the, this week, I was looking at this. I've never seen it this way, but it, it'll bring some really some some understanding to it in just a minute. You just hold on. Uh, so, what was the what was the distinctive difference between the two seeds? Between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. The seed of the woman, of course, is Christ. So anyone who were righteous by faith, anyone that was that was uh, understanding that we could not be righteous in and of ourselves, I couldn't be good enough in and of myself. See, that's the difference in the two seeds. And so Cain comes along and he begins to establish the seed on the earth that's self-righteous, uh, self-sufficient. I can do it. I'm going to give you an offering, God, and you better accept this because this is the best I've got. Uh, and I think it's good enough, and you should too. But it wasn't because it was a corrupted seed. He was he was already he had already, mm -hmm. he, and, and so y'all see what I'm saying there. Mm -hmm. There was a problem, and mm -hmm. so he, the, these two seed seeds began to be propagated in the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, so what happens? We know that that what happened to Cain and Abel. What happens to mankind when they embrace achievement versus receiving? When they go toward achieving rather than receiving. You get the works of the flesh. All the works of the flesh that Paul talked about, all of the works of the flesh, have to do with this seed that came that came forth from self righteousness, uh, and so jealousy and envy and strife and bitter, bitterness and murder and all of these things are are a fruit of that wrong tree, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, because it's it's telling you you can do something, but you don't have the power to do it. You have the limited resources of your own work, mm -hmm. uh, and so when you don't feel like you, when you're either mean or miserable, it's the M and M's of the old covenant. You're going to be uh, you're either going to be uh, prideful or you're going to be uh, or you're going to be hateful. You're going to be mean or you're going to be miserable, and so Cain became mean with Abel because see God accepted Abel's sacrifice because it pointed to the cross, That's right. and He says I don't need the cross. I don't need that. I'm, I, look at me. Look what I just did. Look what I just brought to you. Can you can't you see, God, what I've done? That's what the world's doing. It's a, it's they think it's a they think it's a, a scale principle. If they do enough good that outweigh the bad, then St. Pete is at the gate. He's gonna let you in based upon whether you fit the scale or not. And most people, if they're self righteous, think they fit the scale. Why would they want to think otherwise? Because the other alternative is not good. And that's what makes us. I hope y'all are seeing this. This is this, this is so important. Okay, now this is where the propagation of the two seeds was established. So here comes Cain, and he kills Abel, and then Abel's blood cries out for for vengeance or for justification, uh, and that God answered that blood, and it, and it says a, a blood that was better than the blood of Abel. We see that again in Hebrews chapter twelve, uh, because it it it. it it reversed what happened here. Right. Reversed it. Wow. Now I, I, let's see that principle uh, wow. laid out here. And the second, and in, in, uh, one, two, three, four, okay, five. We're at the fifth section of your notes now. So Genesis chapter four. Look at this. I want you to see this with your own eyeballs, and I want you to see it with your two eyes in the, vis <laughs> in the physical realm. But I want you to see the two eyes too, also identity, inheritance. This is where we start uh, the process of the seed of the woman coming coming back. Uh, so it looked like it looked like Lucifer had it had it. Okay, I got this. I just wiped out the good seed, and uh, so now I'm 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 a winner. You know, ta da! Okay, here then here comes here, here comes a, the plan is still this plan is in place. Uh, Verse 20, chapter 4, verse 25, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and, and named him Seth. And actually, in the Hebrew, that means an appointed substitute. Uh, Seth substitute is what you see in most places, but in other places it, it says appointed. But in reality, if you look at the word, it's an, Seth was the appointed substitute for who? Abel. Abel. And just happens to be the genealogy of Christ comes through Seth. 
Seth is the is the is the genealogy the genealogical line that produced Jesus when he came as a, is in the in the flesh. Uh, but what's interesting to me, for God has appointed another seed for me instead of Abel, who came ki came killed. See, notice that she didn't recognize Cain as her seed. Isn't that interesting? Because she knew the seed of her, the, the seed that was of her had a capital S on it. And she knew Cain was not the one that was that seed. She recognized that. Uh, and so, uh, and as for Seth, to him also was a son. And this is important. I used to wonder, why do they, why do they, why do they just talk about one generation here? But this is setting up the stage for this, this, this mystery that's so wonderful. Uh, let's see, what did Mary, can y'all see what Mary said? Uh, I can't. I can't read it. I guess maybe I'll get a little closer. Uh, anyway, uh, it, sometimes when there's questions or comments, I like to share them. Just she to, just said, "Love that illustration." Love that illustration. Well, thank you. And say t hello to Todd too. I know he's sitting in his recliner over there. I hope he is. We never get to see his name up there. We see your name, and so uh, the women talked about you yesterday. They had a great time in Galveston. We really missed you not being here. Maybe next year you can be here for. Come down for their retreat and the whole, the whole awesome. thing. Yeah, yeah. So that we'll make an appointment for that. Come for on, Mary, Mary. and Marianne, <laughs> and and by then Susan will be everything will be good. We'll we'll be through with this pandemic and everything will be yes. Be Amen. back to the way Amen. it's supposed to be. Okay, now back to what this this illustration is even to me. This is this is this is so profound right here. What happens for Seth to him the son was born and he named him Enosh. Now guess what Enosh means. I may have put it in your notes. Frail man. Frail man. <laughs> and what that means in, in the language of Hebrew, what he was saying is man that could not do it himself. A man that was frail in the sense of his own, re, the reality of the, the attempt on the part of himself to be right with God, to be, to be self-righteous, to be acceptable based upon him alone. You see how this line is de developing? The seed is the, this. So he was, and if you look at, if you have the, the open Bible, uh, anybody have the open Bible? I do. Look at, do you, you see what's written at the bottom under that verse 26? Frail man was to begin a new line who, in contrast to the self-reliance of Cain, would live in reliance upon the name and character of the Lord. Oh. So he was living, and, and if you look, now look look what happened. As soon as Enosh, that, as soon as his line began to be established, what was the very last sentence of that chapter? Then men began to call on the name of the Lord. Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R. And that's what that means is covenant-keeping God. Yeah. That, particular man, uh, that particular writing of the word Lord, all caps, is Yud, Hey, Bob, Hey. Amen. The hand of grace nailed by grace. Mm -hmm. That's what that that's what that word is. So can you see how important that is? Isn't this amazing? Yeah. Yeah, it's so good. And so if you if you follow their genealogy, you'll follow you'll follow it. It comes down to Noah. Noah found grace. Fifth time Noah's name was mentioned, it says he found grace in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. He became a, he became a preacher of righteousness. We've learned a lot in the old the old, the old days. We learned a lot from and still do, but. A lot of the principles of what Joseph Prince has taught yeah. is really still pops back out every time I look back through these notes. But uh, he found grace, and that grace, if you go to Hebrews chapter 12 again, it says that he was ministering, he was a minister of grace, a righteousness that, that was by faith. For a hundred years, he told everybody in the, in the first, that first, uh, that were eventually the flood came. For a hundred years, there was an ark built which represented Christ at a door that was wide open, and all he did was say, whosoever will may come. Because this is not by your merit, it's by the grace of God that, that we're gonna be in this ark in Christ. And so for 100 years, he preached that. Would you say what yud hey bob hey means again? yud hey bob hey is the, is the hand of grace nailed by grace. That's what the four letters in Hebrew mean. The hand of grace nailed, by gra nailed for grace, for our grace. That's why he's got us inscribed on his hands, it says. And uh, I believe it's Zechariah. What is that? Uh, Zephaniah or Zechariah? One of those Z's. And, mm -hmm. 
so many little prophets there that said so much. They're all, it's all right, and the Holy Spirit knows, and he just brought it to my attention. So yeah. they didn't have all this written in, gen in chapters and, and all that. So, uh, But the, the Holy Spirit's the best teacher. And man began to call on the name of the Lord. Why? Because they knew they had a need beyond themselves. They were looking for uh, the, the one who was going to save them. They were looking forward to, to the cross, same way we look back at it. Everybody see that? Uh, now, now let's go to, let's, that, that's the plan was laid, well laid, wasn't it? Yeah. Galatians, go to Galatians chapter 4. So there was a dilemma. The law of sin and death became established in the earth. What did God say to Adam? In the day that you eat of that tree, you're going to surely die. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty plain, isn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's a, I mean, was that a loving thing he said to him? Yeah. Did he know he was going to do it anyway? Yeah. Did he know it was necessary for him to do it anyway? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so we can't be that we can't be that upset with him because this was part of his mystery. Part of if we see it that way, we can we can greet Adam okay when we get there, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have to have a problem with Adam. Uh, Lots okay. of grace for Adam. <laughs> yeah, we got to get. Yeah, there's got to be grace for Adam too. So, uh, now uh, he's already he's, his name means red, so he's probably going to be red enough as it is. You know, red red face. You know. so, sorry. <laughs> No more uh, shame. No more, no shame. more shame. Amen. Uh, are y'all with? Everybody following me so far? Galatians yeah. chapter four, uh, starting with verse four. But when the fullness of time had come, and this fullness of time has to do with what we are talking about here to establish the seed, Christ. There was a problem. Man had fallen into disobedience. But there was no law in place to impute that disobedience to him. It's like if you're if you're if if I drive to East Texas and there's no speed limit sign, and I'm going 95, and some policeman pulls me over and says, "Hey, you're you're going 95 miles an hour." So well, you know, they put the sign that says 70 or 55 or whatever because that's the only way that the officer can stop me and impute it to me, right? That was the problem God had. So in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son, born of a what? Woman. Woman. Not born of a man. It's the woman's seed. This is this is the this is the illustration. <coughs> born under the law. If you want to put it in your Bible, I did this because there's a distinction here. This is the law of Moses. He couldn't be, God, we always used to wonder, why in the world would God give the law? Why would he do that in Mount, why would he, Mount Sinai, what was all that about? Right here. Right here. Without the, without the law, sin could not be imputed. So he had to, he had to record what the law was. Uh, and so in the fullness of time, now look, look what the rest of that verse says. Uh, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law. Now that's not the same law. We were under the, 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 the people here, the, the Jews were under the law of Moses. But we were all under what law? Sin and death. Law of sin, sin and death. death. See the problem, the real problem was the law of sin and death. Yeah. But God used his son, born under the law of Moses, for someone in a in a in an earth suit in in the flesh to keep the law, thus fulfilling the law, so that God could justly impute sin to him, because it was not it was not legal for that to happen. The only loophole God put was in the law. He said, that "Cursed is the man that hangeth on a tree," mm -hmm. and it's actually right here in Galatians. He says that that Jesus became a curse for us. Amen. Mm -hmm. So, can you see the plan? Mm -hmm. This was necessary, a necessary step. He had to be born and be a perfect in thought, word, and deed. Jesus never failed from any principle of the law. Mm -hmm. So, we're not just saved by his death, we're saved by his life too, because he had to fulfill the law. 
And he was tempted in every way like we were, but yet without what? Sin. Without sin. He could have sinned, but he, but he didn't. Thank God he didn't because that was the plan. That was part of the plan. Mm -hmm. And it had to be that way for us to enjoy the knowledge of good and evil and, and ultimately be separated from it. Amen? Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, that we might receive, here we are talking about this, uh, that we might, we, that, uh, uh, to redeem those that were under the law of sin and death, that we might receive, not achieve, see that's the difference between the seeds, mm -hmm. that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son, we're not going to get ahead of ourselves, that's next week, the spirit of his son into your hearts crying, Daddy, Abba. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I want to interject something that's not in your notes here, but I think it's important. Uh, and that's when uh, when John the Baptist uh, was ministering in Luke, I think it's Luke 16. Uh, let me be sure. Yeah. Luke, Luke 16, 16 says, The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God has been preached and everyone is pressing into it since that time uh, before that time they were they were they were still were believing it the same the same seed and we'll, we'll see that in communion here but look at your other illustration here uh, I borrowed this from something else that was on Facebook you may have seen it already but uh, this was this is on the left is Mary. She was about fifteen. They, they, they say they think she was about fifteen when she was pregnant with Jesus. Uh, and this is Elizabeth. This is John the Baptist's mom, carrying John the Baptist. Now remember what John the John's father was. Yeah, yeah. Priest. He was a priest. priest. Yeah. And what was John? A priest. And true. He was a prophet. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. So the law and the prophets were until John. So here in the Bible is the, is the evidence that the law and the prophets were recognizing the seed of the woman, ending the law and the prophets, the ministry of the law and the prophets. You see that? In fact, to me, it's, it, it shows that even unborn, yeah, no wonder that baby was sleeping. Yeah, the, John the Baptist, that's what I was, thank you for bringing it up, but John the Baptist, when, when Elizabeth, when Mary came to visit Elizabeth, as they approached one another, John the Baptist started leaping in her womb, recognizing Jesus as an unborn, still un, both of them unborn, but recognizing. Mm -hmm. isn't that that a, was isn't, the isn't end that of the law. Yeah. It was the end of the law. It was the end of that bondage, the, the, yeah. the, the entrance to perfect liberty, the entrance to redemption to the, the entrance of that that promise that was coming to the first woman about her seed I mean this is just what a what a mystery what a plan what a beautiful illustration of what of what God wanted to do and what a beautiful picture of an unborn child yeah recognizing yeah that 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 That's that, amazing. you know what didn't have to be born to know and I believe that all of us have had things that we were born before we were born. He he had gifts, worship gifts, and mm -hmm. things that were in, in us that 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 uh, were known from the foundation of the world. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, John one twelve and thirteen. I skipped that, but it says that that we might receive, not achieve. It says, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God. Those that believe on his name, that were born not of the will of man, not my, man couldn't do it himself, but but the will of God, the plan and purpose, the destiny that God set forth with his, with this particular son. And again, faith looks at it both directions. Faith is a recognition from before it happened to went to its fulfillment. And mm -hmm. now that we live in the generation we live in, we're looking back to its fulfillment. Mm -hmm. But it was fulfilled in Christ. Okay, y'all everybody am I confusing anybody? Okay. Now um, 
So that was, that was the ministry, and that was the recognition of the passing of the baton. Uh, now Jesus was going to be, the, the, the law and the prophets were going to be put away as having been fulfilled in Christ. Every jot, he didn't say, I, I, Jesus himself, and I've had this used against me so many times, I don't like to think about it. But he says, it says, he didn't come to destroy, to, to destroy the law, but I said, well, what else does it say? It says he came to fulfill it. No, he didn't come to put it away. It still has a purpose for people who are not right. a receiver yet. And what is the purpose of the law? Points to sin. Comes Stops, to sin. shuts every mouth, yeah. and makes us all guilty. Yeah. Not innocent. So man is misused by the lie. They misused the purpose of the law to think it's a way that we can make ourselves innocent, make ourselves righteous by what we do. That's not what it was designed for. Mm -hmm. But that's that's the recognition there, and it's such a such a wonderful thing. And it, you know, look at look at the Apostle Paul. I mean, look at look at this man. That talk about grace applied like no other case. And he says that mm -hmm. the ultimate proud man who thought he had it covered. And now he's what did he call it? All that stuff was a pile of well, you know, manure. Synonyms, uh, whatever you want to think. That's what it was, rubbish. And he said, for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, who gained for him what he could never have gained yet through what he was trying to do, the endeavor, the self-indulgent, self-indulgent, self-focused self, uh, uh, work of the old, the old way, the, the Cain way. Y'all see it started with Cain, right? That, that's where it started. Uh, <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I've got four verses in my heart right now that I'm not going to go to. I want to finish the course today with this. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We'll start with verse 29. That no flesh should glory in his presence. In other words, it's not me, it's him. It's not my flesh, it's his spirit. It's not by my, my might or my, my power, but it's by the spirit, says the Lord. It's his spirit that's working in us. Uh, but, we have a boast in Christ. It says, but of him, I know, I know Susan loves this scripture, but of him you are, of him you are, in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom. See, he's this wisdom that we're talking about this morning. He's the wisdom that came and did for us what we could never do ourselves and put us in a position to know and understand it, to believe it, to receive it, to apply it, to let it cause us to be made, uh, to be born from above, to be born again, uh, to open up the mystery to open up our eyes, spiritual eyes, to the inheritance and identity, and righteousness and sanctification. Jesus became who became for us righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That it is written, He who glories, let him glory in the Lord. And again, that's L O R D, all caps. Glory in the covenant that we have through Jesus Christ. And He wants us to glory in that. See. I kind of, I, you know, we've all kind of come through different, different, the different streams of a little bit of confusion. I did this for a little while because I, and I still hear people say this. Well, I'm as righteous as God Almighty. You know, something about that kind of like bothered me a little bit. And now and I understand why now. It's because I'm not righteous as God Almighty apart from Christ. Right. I have Jesus. I have Christ in me, the mystery. <clears throat> and because I have Christ in me, I have his righteousness. That's right. That's right. I, don't have, I don't have the righteousness of God. No. Apart from, if Christ was not in me, I would not have the righteousness of God. Right. You see? So the gift is not apart from the, the giver that's, that's in me. That's so true. I'm not sanctified uh, you know, by what I've done. I'm sanctified because of what he's done. Mm -hmm. But I really wanted to focus, because I think it's important for us to relate to that righteousness. That I have Christ, and with Him comes everything, and that's the that's the mystery we go back to. That 
was hidden, but now has been revealed. Mm -hmm. When you have Christ, you get it all. Uh, Abel recognized that. Seth recognized that. Noah recognized that. Abraham recognized that. Um, it was such a it was such an understanding in the eyes of uh, of Jacob that he did whatever he could to get Esau to let him have it because he didn't think it was worth any value to it. He didn't. You know why? Why did why did uh, Esau? Because he was of the seed that thought he could do it himself. And you remember what his dad told him when 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 Jacob got the blessing? What remember what the blessing was that Jacob got? You're gonna have the dew of heaven. Now who's the dew of heaven? Christ. Uh, and everything's gonna be yours, and it's not gonna be about what you do. You can go down there and work for your uncle Laban. He's gonna try to mess you around. It ain't gonna happen. Every time he says, oh, okay, the speckled and spotted are mine, and the, the, the solid ones are yours, they'd all become solid. Yeah. Oh, I've changed my mind. The solids are all mine. You're going to get the speckled. Every one from that point on was speckled. Mm -hmm. You couldn't change that blessing mm -hmm. of, the, of the firstborn. And he knew that. He loved it. He wanted to embrace it. He was a frail man. In fact, wasn't he? Isn't that what it says about, about uh, uh, Jacob? He was, his he was a mama's boy. Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, it really does say that. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, here's here's uh, Esau. I got this. You know, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a hunter. I can. And so, when when Jacob got the blessing that Esau was supposed to get, Esau comes running in and says, "Well, what about me? What are you going to?" He said, "By your sword, you're going to live." So he still had, he still survived, but it was with his own sword, not the blessing of the firstborn, not the blessing of Jesus. Yeah. Exciting, yeah. exciting things. Okay. Uh, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained. This is what I love. This is 1 Corinthians. Let's just go over one chapter, chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for what? Yeah. For our glory. Because what? guess what? We were going to get... We were going to exchange the frailness of the glory of what we couldn't do to His glory. His goodness, uh, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, what would they have not done? Never crucified the Lord of glory. Mm -hmm. Ever. The mouse trap, according to Martin Luther, the mouse trap fell. <clears throat> and here, all this time, remember all the all the babies born in Moses' day were killed. Mm -hmm. All the babies born in Jesus' day were killed. What was what was the devil trying to do? Kill, kill the, the woman's seed. seed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, that's what that's what was going on here. They would never have it, it, if he'd have known. So he thought by destroying Jesus, he was going to get him, and we're going to move on to the next one. Yeah. But this time, the fullness of time had come, and it happened, and it fulfilled it. Beautiful, beautiful re uh, plan of redemption. Second Corinthians. Flip over Second Corinthians chapter five. And he's given us this mystery as a ministry of reconciliation. He's given us, he's given all of us in this room and all of y'all that are watching, he's, he's given us all this ministry of reconciliation. What God had done, it's written right here, so we might as well read it because he writes it better than I can say it. Uh, anybody have a King James Version? Somebody just get, get the King James and, and uh, when you get it, uh, tell me what it says in verse, this is chapter 5 of 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 17, verse 17. Start with, uh, give, me, give me what 14 says in the King James Version. It says, for the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge. And if one died for all, then we, then we're, then we're, we're, we're all, all dead. dead. New King James doesn't say it quite the same, and this is one of those verses where you've got to be careful about interpreting. Uh, because, you know, I, it says that we all, everybody died in Christ. Um, that's not what that King James Version says, and I believe that's the rendering of it. I think it is too. I apologize. It, yeah, this is the New King James Version. No, the, no you're, you're right. That's the King James. See, that's what, that's what I wanted. It says, then we're all dead. Then we're all dead. 
See, there's nobody that escaped the death that was necessary for Christ's atonement, atoning work. That's what Paul's trying to say here. He's not trying to say that everybody's dead in Christ, everybody's already dead in Christ and going to be, you know, born, you know, born, uh, you know, again. That's not what it's saying. And I, you know, I, I don't, I don't really want to make that a, a, a. I just want to make the the work of Christ be something that. You know, he wanted a willing bride. He wanted a willing. I, I, if I came up to Deborah when we were going to get married and said, "Well, you're going to be my wife," and you mean whether you like it or not, that's that's a done deal. <laughs> She looked at me like, "Well, <laughs> I don't think so." Uh, but that's that's what you know. That's what we have to be. We, you know, he wanted us. Th this is the free will that we all have as a result of Christ's redemptive work. It's something he wanted. But now, and and, it, and I believe it proves that up in what we're going to say here in, in uh, 2 Corinthians five, starting with verse seventeen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold. Most things have become new. Does it say all? All. Okay. What is the Greek for all? All. All. Okay. Uh, now, everybody say now. Now. All things are of God, who has, re who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Now, this part, we need to understand this part, verse 19, that, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Yeah. So we don't go out and, and self-righteously judge people because we, we're, the, the, the entrance of the truth is what causes them to back away from the law and embrace the truth. And, and if we say, well, you're already, everything's already fixed, you don't have to worry about it, you know, then there's no relationship that's built, no no, I don't believe a new life is established because it's when the law has its work in us, it closes our mouths and causes us to become guilty. If we don't, if we don't think we're guilty, then then what's the point? What's the point of redemption? What's the point of the two seeds? What's the point of embracing something now? Uh, everybody with me on that? Uh, so the the work was for everybody. The acceptance of it is not. Everybody's not accepting it. I mean, I, I wish they all were, and Jesus and God does too. Second Timothy, the prayer we've been praying is all mm -hmm. is all about that. That he was not willing that anyone would perish, but that all would come to the knowledge of the truth. He wants us to, but I think if we don't, as a church, get the message right, how can we give them the opportunity? We're either going one way or the other. We're jumping on both sides of the of the road. We're either telling them that you know they already are, or we're telling them that they, they are because of their that you know they're, they're damned because of their activities, because of what they're doing in their bodies. But the truth is right there, dead center. It's, it's because of Christ, and it's and it's a willing. It's a, it's something to recognize and embrace and accept. We receive it when we when our heart is pricked. Remember on the day of Pentecost, it says when Peter when Peter preached to him, what happened? So our hearts were pricked. Mm -hmm. What must we do? Believe in what Jesus did for you, because up to that time, that whole group that was there were believing. They were saved by what they did. Mm -hmm. Not what yeah. Jesus did. Yeah. Everybody see that? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, so that is that that, and so again, judgment. We talked about we we ministered on judgment. God says He's given judgment to the Son, and then the Son is it received the judgment. He became judge for everybody. John John chapter twelve, mm -hmm. so that now He could let you be the judge. So he says, "I'm not going to judge you on the last day, but what you what you what you say is going to judge you. Am I the person, or are you the person that's going to save yourself?" See, so I love that he's not he's not judging any man, he's not judging anyone. He's reconciled them all. He's reconciled everyone. Uh, he imputed the trespasses of every man to to Jesus, uh, and committed to us the word of reconciliation. Reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors. That means that we're from somewhere else. Right now, I'm standing on the earth, but I'm also seated in heaven. And that's my citizenship. And I'm speaking from there to here as an ambassador. And all of y'all are, and, all, and, and the people that are watching. Uh, uh, as though God were pleading through us, not, y'all better clean up your act. Is that what we're pleading? Y'all, pl please understand what Jesus did for you, how he reconciled you, what he did for you. 
And then it says, as we're pleading, as God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Be reconciled. He did the work to reconcile you. Be reconciled. Uh, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might be, become the righteous of God in him. That was a just, this was, the, which is what? He, what, he, what he did here is that he established perfect justice. Jesus, who did not deserve, I, 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 this song came up as I was putting this on paper. Um, what was, it's, it's uh, I owed a debt I couldn't pay. He paid a debt he didn't owe. I needed someone to take my sins away. And now I sing a brand new song, Amazing Grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the offer that's on the table. That's the offer because what he wants is a willing bride that will receive the adoption as children. And from that point on, the perfection of his fullness we've all received uh, in grace upon grace upon that, that, that perfection that when you're, when you're born from above, you have a perfection now in your spirit. Uh, I can't go into all the details of what the last step of that is going to be in the physical body, but we have this in this jars of clay. We have this temple. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, and we are one spirit with him. So now we're enjoying the benefits of this, of this, uh, of this new, this sonship. Uh, and now the, all the things that you were saying, shame and the, uh, condemnation, all those things that we're able to manifest in our lives, he doesn't want us to manifest anymore because it's, it's, a, it's a moot point. It's, it's, it does, it's, not, it's not a reality. We can look and see that we're separated now from that, that mm -hmm. death that we were under before. Right. We're separated. And that's what makes us like God himself. God is separated from sin. He, he's yeah. he's uh, not subject to it, but he knows it. And that's why, that's why they said a man has become like one of us, like one of us, U.S., knowing good from evil. The problem was they had something had to be done to fix that. Yeah. And Paul, Paul said, I've, because of the new birth and because of the new identity in Christ, he said, I've done nothing wrong to anybody. Yeah. He was speaking out of his identity, his and his. The I past, used to wonder why he, he said that. He also said, "I know no man by the flesh." Yeah, and no, I know no, no man flesh. by the flesh. Yeah. So yeah. the recreated new species that we are in Christ, yeah, is brand new and it's one with Christ. And it's only the perfection in the spirit. It is not the perfection of the flesh. Yeah. So but I'm, we are perfect in Christ. Yeah. And so we're see we're pleading that that's the recon the ministry of reconciliation is by the Holy Spirit. Uh, with the truth that that the enemy doesn't want them to hear, he wants to keep them believing a lie, and not the truth. And so that's that's why it, we've got to be. Our message has to be the acceptance, not the rejection. The church has been rejecting the world, where God is accepting the world. Everywhere Jesus went, he went to the the, right. the, least, the least, the last, and the lost because see they knew that they didn't have any self reliance. <laughs> Went to the Pharisees. Yeah. What, do we need? what do we need a cross for? What do we need? We're keeping all those. We're keeping. I've, I've done all those things since I was a kid. Well, let me give you a quiz on that one. <laughs> Go sell what you have and come follow me. Whoops. Uh, <laughs> flunked the first, flunked the first one. He went, went his way sorrowfully because he had great riches. So riches were, was his God, not God. So that's that. So anyway, I've I've gone over the time here. I've just enjoyed in being here. First John, Susan saying First John four seventeen. As he is, so are we. So are we in this. in this world right now. We are the righteousness of God in Christ because Christ is in us, and we have Christ. We have everything. That's right. And next week we're going to see. Uh, we're going to finish in First Corinthians chapter two. The ministry, the witness of the Holy Spirit, which which I believe next week, I just I'm just I, I just believe the Lord is showing me this that He wants to activate the the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the in the church and in the mm -hmm. congregation based upon the truth of the gospel. Uh, let's see, can we get somebody to do the call? Better and better, Pastor. Well, yeah. it, it's this is such good news. It's it's like, uh, but but to see it. 
to see the mystery, to see the plan, to see the, to, to see the reason why God subjected it to futility. Like it says in Romans 8, I used to wonder, why did God go to all this? Why did he allow this to happen? It was necessary to make us like him. Innocence wouldn't have done it. So when you're dead, do you need to be healed from the disease? No. So that would mean that you need it now, right? Um, that applies to living people, right? Yeah. And I believe that's where... So let's just agree today that this yeah. disease cannot stay on Carol. Amen. Because Amen. she's alive and living. That's a benefit of hers. Amen. And we curse cancer out of her body today. Amen. We command it to go out of her body today. Yes. She is it has no right. It's trespassing Amen. on holy ground. Yeah. Yes. She belongs to the Lord, and she has a right to be healed now. Yes. Amen. Yes. And I'm just calling it forth. I'm I just, agree with you. I'm in agreement. Thank you, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. And her eyes also, Eric, healing yes. over her eyes. Yes. She wants to see through her eyes. Mm -hmm. not Deborah and I are supposed to be going up there tomorrow. Uh, and take, they want some rubies, too, so, uh, okay, awesome. uh, but we're going to take we'll take some spiritual. We'll take the prayers we'll take of the saints. Yes, Amen. Yes. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll yes. Someone says, we'll I heal all your diseases. We'll yeah. Cancer's a disease. Amen. Amen. And, he, and then he goes on to say, and then he a few psalms over. He daily loads us with those. Yes. Yes. Daily, yes. And, yes. So, and he says, I was long life, I'm satisfied. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and again, you know, the first, what's the first benefit? Uh, the I, forgive all your sins. I believe that, I still believe that's the one. I, I forgive that all your iniquities. It, it, it forgives so all of our iniquities. I think that's today. the one. Would you mind telling uh, Tamisha out front, just tell her we're having communion? The, 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 the girl that works out. She wanted to be part of communion. Absolutely. Hey, you were, you're pretty good. You forgot the you, you remember the mask. I wouldn't. Yeah. Have, I wouldn't have. I would <laughs> get halfway through HEB and I mean, people are looking at me. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? I, did, did I, I did shave. <laughs> but then you realize, oh, no way, I can touch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they can see you shave. <laughs> it's new normal sometimes. It's like, uh, but anyway, we're trying to get one more person in for a communion here, but. I'm gonna just I'm just gonna go to Genesis chapter 14 for the communion today. Uh, isn't it awesome that Jesus could could be out of the timeline, and he he could manifest himself through the timeline, even before he fully before the fullness of time came and he manifested in a body. He manifested to Abraham. He manifested to to. Uh, good point. There's some, there's some communion part right back there in the back. Just take the lid off of those and. Uh, but he, when he established this Abrahamic covenant with the he, he, he manifested himself in, in the, as Melchizedek. Yes. Anybody remember what the word Melchizedek means? King of righteousness. Mm -hmm. And it also means king of peace. Mm -hmm. And of his kingdom <laughs> there shall be no end. Amen. So Amen. this is another indication uh, that where uh, Melchizedek, which is, a, is, a, is, it says he didn't have any, he didn't have any, he was, wasn't from anybody and he wasn't going, you know, his, his lineage was supernatural. Yeah. He was, he never had, there was no beginning or end. We know that this was a manifestation. Joshua had the angel of the, angel of the Lord, capital L. Mm -hmm. Joshua asked him, are you with us or are you with them? He said, no. <laughs> I've got, I my own. I've got my own. I am. I've He's got like, my own mission here, yeah. and it's really I'm I'm really protecting. I'm protecting the seed. The seed. That I, that's going to be me. That's good. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome. Mm -hmm. it, it's not about how good you are. Thank this you. is about how good my father is, how good I am, and how good the Holy Spirit is. Mm -hmm. And we got a plan, mm -hmm. and we're gonna and we're working it out. So just get out of our just go get be with us or get out of the way. <laughs> Okay. And he is the way. He is the way. <laughs> he yeah. is the way. So you're the either going to be in the way, way or in the way. <laughs> so Melchizedek, you know, king of Salem, king of peace. That's what Salem means, peace. Uh, thought, uh, brought out bread and wine. Uh, 
He was called, he called him the priest of the Most High God. Who is our priest, our high priest today? Jesus is our high priest. And he's ministering this same thing, the bread and the wine. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God Most High, possessor of heavens and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. Guess what delivered our enemies into us? To our hand. What's in my hand right now is what delivered the enemy into my hand. I didn't deliver myself in, you know, from, from my enemies. He delivered me. He did. Amen. So, Lord, we thank you. We, 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 we lift up Carol right now as we're doing it. This is, what, this is a work. This is the ministry of the priesthood, our high priest forever, Jesus Christ, sitting at the right hand of the Father. We're eating his, your, Jesus, we're eating your flesh and drinking your blood. And this blessing we have, and you said it again through through Zechariah, um, the father of, of John the Baptist, the first New Covenant prophecy. You said that you delivered that you delivered us from all of our enemies, um, and, and they, everybody thought it was the, the Romans, but we know better. We know higher. So our enemies. So, and we thank you, Lord, for this blessing. We thank you for the, the privilege to remember you as we do this. We're remembering your work. In your body, you came in the flesh to deliver those that were in the flesh, that were in our bodies. And you came to, to give life to our bodies with this, with this bread and to, give, and to give new life to our spirits through this blood. And so, Lord, we just thank you for your, your body. We thank you for the work that it works in us that yeah. keeps us from having to work the work ourselves. Yes. Your work works. And we just, we just, we believe that. We believe the word. You are the word, Lord. And you became flesh and established this truth to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And this is the blood of the new covenant. Not the blood of the old covenant. That didn't take away anything. It just covered it up. But the blood of the new covenant, the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, destroyed the what the, the accusations and the threats and, and the condemnation that the enemy had against us destroyed it once and for all put it away by his death and resurrection he's removed our sins from us by being becoming sin for us so that we might be made the righteous of god in christ and lord we thank you for that we thank you for this beautiful new covenant we thank you for the deliverance it has to us spirit soul and body lord renew our minds to this truth that's the warfare is between what we know to be true and what the enemy's trying to deceive us into believing. And so, Lord, remove that lie from our, from our minds as we behold you, as we behold you, Lord. Change us into your image from glory to glory, not in what we already are inside, but what we are in our mind. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. Uh, see everybody, a few people are still with us there. And so um, we'll be back here next week um, for the last of the three. And it's going to be on the witness of the Spirit. Again, I said at the beginning, if you didn't hear it before, uh, the two things that, in, that are recorded in Scripture that, have, that activate the Holy Spirit in ways that the supernatural. So uh, don't miss that. We'll, we'll be with you next week and we'll go through the... The third, the third step, which is the witness of the Holy Spirit. God bless y'all. It was good to see everybody this morning. Uh, uh, Kim, I don't know if you saw that. Uh, Mary said, uh, "Cancer has to, has to, has no right on Carol's body." Amen. I agree with your prayers. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, everybody. Love y'all. We'll see you next week. <laughs>